Good evening and welcome to this edition of News Leader. Today is Tuesday, December the 28th, 2021. I'm Andrew Todd. In tonight's news, we'll have some highlights from the year as we look back on 2021 during this special edition of News Leader. We'll be right back after these messages. Everyone here at Strip Sacker Refrigeration would like to congratulate the 2021 Tullahoma Wildcats, head coach John Olive and staff on an outstanding undefeated season and first time state championship. Go Cats! Ow! MacArthur Manor Assisted Living is passionate about creating better experiences for our Manchester seniors. Our residents describe us in a few words. Welcome when you walk through the doors at MacArthur Manor, we'll treat you like family. Caring. Through high standards of personalized care, we help residents live life to its fullest. Engaging. With a wide range of life-enriching activities, there is something for everyone at MacArthur Manor. With our residents and staff now vaccinated, call us today to schedule your safe and personalized tour. Welcome back on Tuesday. Newsletter Philip Scoggins spoke with Alan Lindley, Director of Coffee County Emergency Management and Homeland Security, about COVID-19 vaccinations rollout in Coffee County. I'm speaking today with Alan Lindley with the uh, Coffee County Emergency Management Department. And Alan, uh, so the buck stops with you on uh, on COVID vaccination at this point, doesn't it? <laughs> well. It's actually the health department that's in charge of the vaccinations. Um, we're helping them with logistics, and we've been working with them uh, since, well, since March on uh, on the response uh, phase of this. And now we've moved into the vaccination phase. And uh, it's there's been quite a few hiccups uh, initially, but... Uh, well, you've never done. Hopefully, this. we've got that system streamlined now. So, well, you've never done this before, so we can cut you a little slack on that. <laughs> Longest disaster I've ever worked. I, I believe you. I believe you. So, how many uh, vaccinations are are we expecting to get in, and what kind of timeline do you think for coffee? So, so I do know that uh, vaccines. Some vaccines arrive today. Uh, we had a very limited supply last week. I'm not sure the exact number we've got this week. Um, what they've done the last two weeks is they really focused on our long-term care facilities, our you know nursing homes, assisted livings, things like that. So a lot of our vaccinations or vaccines have gone to those facilities to to vaccinate our elderly and and some of our uh, healthcare workers that work there. Uh, I do know uh, they're going to be open for vaccination tomorrow by appointment only. Uh, the state launched a new uh, online portal uh, yesterday morning. We shared it uh, on Facebook and with the media. And uh, before I got on here with you, we had uh, 1,400 people that had signed up since yesterday morning for vaccine. Um, I, I, I do know we didn't get that much. I'm pretty sure we didn't get that much vaccine. So, so but there's there's 1,400 people. Do, do all of those people qualify under this current phase of vaccinations? Well, do you think? And, and I'm not sure because we don't we're not privy to that data. Uh, when somebody signs up, the health department uh, will um, they'll either send them a text, an email, or give them a call if they don't have text or email. Uh, and make sure that they are in the correct phase and everything lines up. At that point, you'll be given an appointment time, uh, and then you can go for your vaccination. So currently, uh, as of today, they're vaccinating uh, first responders, healthcare workers, and 75 and older currently. Uh, they hope to expand that out, but it's probably going to be at least another two weeks before they drop the age some more. Yeah, I saw something about a recommendation of dropping to 65 and older. I was going to ask if, if that is that a state right. decision at this point or is that a, a county decision? It is. Uh, it's it's a state decision uh, because the Department of Health is, is with the state. Uh, they've pretty well been kind of calling all the shots as far as, uh, you know, when they open up the different levels. Uh, and that's coming straight from the governor's office. So uh, we're relying on them to, it depends on where 
he says we need to be. Now, once we feel like we've got the majority of the folks that are currently opened up, vaccinated, then then we can step it down. So, and and folks can go to the Tennessee Department of Health website and determine whether, uh, sorry, whether they're eligible in the current phase or not. We'll we'll provide a link on our on our Facebook page for that. Good. Good. And uh, so. Um, in addition to the online portal for signing up, can can people also, if they're not internet savvy, can they talk to the health department, or do they have to go through the online portal to get a reservation? So there, we <clears throat> we had a call with our regional office this morning, and they are recommending that people do the online portal. But it, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of folks in the current age group that that just don't do online you know uh so there is a uh a 1-800 number that they or a 931 number they can call i'm not sure of that off the top of my head but i'll get that for you so you can put it up okay we'll put that on the screen there for you uh and for those people that are not tech savvy they can give them a call and they'll walk them through the process we'll be right back after these messages I got a tour and I saw all the things and I was so excited about them. And she took me to the movie theater and it had red chairs. This is a done deal <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> we have so many activities here that you just can't keep up with them all. We have exercise, we have coloring, we have crafts. It's uh, charming, it's attractive, it's very comfortable. It was one of the best decisions of my life. I was skeptical about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. There are a lot of opinions being shared. But I had the chance to talk with my doctor about my concerns. He told me the vaccines are backed by decades of research and that the vaccines are proven safe and effective. Now I'm protected and ready to put this pandemic behind us. Join the millions of Tennesseans who have decided to give COVID-19 vaccines a shot. Visit covid19.tn.gov to find an appointment today. Welcome back. This past weekend, the annual Miss Tullahoma pageant was held at the Tullahoma High School Auditorium. The attendance was capped at a third capacity because of COVID restrictions. That didn't stop any of the contestants or their families from cheering them on. During the senior Miss Tullahoma segment, a new tradition was started by awarding class representatives in addition to the regular court of winners. Let's look in on the crowning ceremony and then we'll hear Candy Couch interview Miss Mary Catherine Stroop, Miss Tullahoma 2021. Our ninth grade class representative is number four, Elise Kelly McCullough. Our 10th grade class representative is number eight, Addison Elizabeth Mahaffey. Our 11th grade class representative is number seven, Faith Danielle Banks. Our 12th grade class representative is number six, Kaylin Amaya Farrell. I will now announce to you your 2021 Miss Telahoma and her court. Third runner up, number 10, Trista Dana Eggleston. Second runner up, number two, Allie Elizabeth Cardwell. First runner-up, number 22, Ansley Kerr Bond. And the 2021 Miss Telahoma, number three, Mary Catherine Street.
Congratulations. Our 2021 Miss Telahoma and Courts. What your name is? My name is Mary Catherine Stroop. Yes, and, and what year in school are you? I'm a junior in high school. Okay, what a junior in high school like to do? It's uh, been a while <laughs> since I used to do that. We like to watch TikToks a lot. TikTok. Tic Tac Toe? TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I know you're a cheerleader. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what else do you like to do? Um, just pretty much cheerleading right now. I'd like to go to college for cheerleading. So oh, really, uh -huh. yes, ma'am. Well, do you have any idea where you'd like to go? Western Kentucky. Oh, she doesn't want to go too far from home. I no, bet your family's I glad about that. Yeah, my mom is super happy about that. Certainly, certainly. Well, you t one of the questions that they asked was what you enjoy doing, and you were telling about going with your grandmother places. Yes. Oh, that was a really sweet story. Yes. I love yes. Miami. She's always one for an adventure. Well, that's good. We'll keep her young. Absolutely. Yes. So you had quite the cheering section here tonight. I did. More than half of my family. Well, <laughs> no, less than half of my family is here. There's more out there, probably waiting on me. So oh, that's a good thing. Well, they're out there in the rain, huh? Yeah, they are. Yes. Well, um, so understand that graduation is in May, which isn't too far away. But what will you do during the summer? Uh, probably just hang out with a lot of my friends, probably go kayaking or just hang out and stuff. I love to hang out with them. So oh, Good. Well, you had a good answer to your question, obviously, because you love your family dearly and they love you, certainly. Yes, and everybody's mighty proud of you and Thank all you. you've done. And you're beautiful. And, Thank you. And I think it's about time to wrap it up, but is there anything you'd like to say before? before we go? Um, I'm just very excited. I'm very excited that I got this title and I love my families here to support me with it. So. There you go. Well, let's give them the wave. You want to do that one more time? Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Screw in the light bulbs. Congratulations. The light bulb. I love it. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. It's not invoice. It's not MSRP. It's not Christmas Day, although it may feel like it. It's the lowest prices in Middle Tennessee, period. It's a Stan McNabb Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram or Stan McNabb Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac before these prices are gone forever. I had a knee replacement, so they've got me at Life Care, which I'm very, very thankful for. I couldn't garden, I couldn't do my flower beds, I can't chase my little dogs. I have been in several therapy sessions for knees and back, and that's the best therapist I believe I've ever been to. It's tremendous because I'm able to walk again, but if it wasn't for the care, I wouldn't be where I am. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Welcome back. On Sunday night, news leaders Philip Scoggins and I attended the last of the Concerts on the Farm series featuring the Avett brothers as they concluded their three-day run in Manchester. The main point for Concerts on the Farm series was that it allowed Bonnaroo organizers to showcase the property in a different way, which will be a catalyst for future events. In addition, it brought new fans to the farm that have never been before. The Avett shows were the last of the series for 2021. Representatives said that they are looking forward to doing more events on the farm in the future. We weren't allowed to video any of the performance, but we have several photos on our Facebook page. I spoke to some attendees before the show. It's the 4th of July, and we are on the farm at Bonnaroo for live music. Can you believe it? The Avett brothers are playing on the third night. Uh, they've been here Friday, Saturday, and here they are on the 4th of July. And we thought we'd chat with some people and see how excited they are to be back on the farm. Well, as I said, we're here on the farm and we are tailgating a little bit, if you will, for the big Avett Brothers show that is about to happen. And we have some folks here that uh, want to find out where they're from and how excited they are about the Avett show tonight. And uh, start with you, my friend. Uh, where are you from? <laughs> Atlanta. 
What brings you here? I uh, came to see, uh, do a little camping and see Avid Brothers. Okay. Uh, I came from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Been following these boys for many years. They are my church. But I don't go to church except when I come see the Avid Brothers. So Amen. how many shows will this be for you? You know, I'm not as big of a fan because I haven't been as fan as long as some people. So I think this is number 15 or 16. Excellent. But uh, they are something to see. <laughs> and you, sir? I'm from Atlanta, and this will probably be show 20-ish. Nice thing is I've seen him here at Bonnaroo, but uh, it's cool to be here at a non-Bonnaroo and be on the property. It's a, di it's a different vibe. But it is very, it, I really yeah. want to go walk around because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it feels like being back home. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> but the fences are gone and the, there's not nearly as many people, but but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what it feels like on the, on the, uh, on the field later. Right, right. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm from Atlanta also, and I love the Avett Brothers. This is probably our 20-something show, too. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Now, you had said something about um, you guys were planning on biking here. Is that correct? We were planning on biking we, from we, the campground, but uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Oh, no. well, you know, but we're here. <laughs> we're tailgating. Yep. Uh, we have yes. some great weather too. On top of that, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, amazing. And we got a, a lucky tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. we do have a lucky tree. Yeah. I didn't it's, even know. Like, there's, there's never that. shade at Bonnaroo, but <laughs> no, but we and got you found it. The one, you found one tree. between the tree and the flat. Yeah, we got shade. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it's going to be a great show, and I really appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, welcome to Tennessee, and uh, well, welcome back to Tennessee, I guess I should say. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a great show, and thanks for being here, guys. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Just after our Tuesday newscast was shot, Bonnaroo owners Live Nation announced that they were canceling the once again sold out festival due to heavy rains, leaving thousands of Bonnarooians in a lurch as they waited around the area to get in line to go onto the grounds or as they were driving cross country. This is the post on Bonnaroo's website announcing the cancellation. Quote, we are absolutely heartbroken to announce that we must cancel Bonnaroo. While this weekend's weather looks outstanding, currently Cineru is waterlogged in many areas, the ground is incredibly saturated on our toll booth paths, and the campgrounds are flooded to the point that we are unable to drive in or park vehicles safely. We have done everything in our power to try to keep the show moving forward, but Mother Nature has dealt us a tremendous amount of rain over the past 24 hours, and we have run out of options to try to make the event happen safely and in a way that lives up to the Bonnaroo experience. Please find ways to safely gather with your Bonnaroo community and continue to radiate positivity during this disappointing time. We will see you on the farm in June of 2022. All tickets purchased through front gate tickets will be refunded in as little as 30 days to the original method of payment." End quote. The Manchester Chamber of Commerce and several other entities have whipped together some shows to help replace heartbroken fans with some live music options. The most notable is called The Other Fest, which is happening at several locations in Manchester. We'll let you know about the fate of Bonnaroo as more news is released. We'll be right back after these messages. I feel like we're safe at Park View. There's somebody on staff all the time. So if you need help, help us there. We are surrounded with people that are looking after us and, and taking care of us. The staff is wonderful and always available. We feel so safe and secure here. I feel safe at Parkview all the time. We tend to lose our motivation when we have something that's chronic, but you've got to do what you can early on as you can. After I'd exercise like that, I would have a lot of energy to do housework or whatever I needed. Well, I would recommend it highly to anyone at any degree of Parkinson. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. 
Welcome back. Girl Scout cookie sales are about to wrap up, and so we spoke with local troop leader Greg Gressel about how sales are going and things they've done to make it safer to sell cookies this year. Today we're speaking with Greg Gressel. We usually see him out at South Jackson, but today he's in the role of his uh, Girl Scout troop leader out at the Girl Scout cookie van. Can you tell us what's going on, Greg? Yes, we are here at the corner of Anderson Street and Lincoln Street at the Girl Scout cookie truck. Um, Girl Scout Troop 2163 is excited this year about this new innovative idea. We kind of answered the national organization's call to, to do something different, uh, find the innovative ways to keep the girls safe and our customers safe and be as contactless as possible for cookie booths during this pandemic. And so this was our, um, our solution to that. This has traditionally always been our, our Girl Scout van. And this year we turned it into the cookie truck. And so um, we're excited about that and what that's brought um, to the table. You'll see here this very nice window that was done. Um, A&R Glass uh, stepped in um, and, and did this window for us. All of these wonderful magnets and lettering and everything. Minuteman Press uh, did that for us. Um, and also a sponsor and making sure the the vehicle's ready and, and all of that. Um, Nick's Auto um, also was involved in that. So we've had several community partners that have just jumped in and really made this happen for us. And so we're super excited about it. It's been a great opportunity. And um, so we're looking forward to having more and more people. I'm gonna step here a little towards the front as we've got some customers coming up and let them do their thing. But, um, but yeah, this coming weekend is the National uh, Cookie weekend national girl scout cookie weekend and for us we are going to it's also going to be girl scout alumni weekend and so we're going to have um at all of our booth setups for our troop we're inviting our alumni to come out and they don't even have to come by anything just stop by see us say hey uh, tell us about your experience and we've got a, a gift for all of our alumni that come by troop 2163's cookie truck or any of our booths for the weekend we're going to be at MAPCO from 3 to 5 on Friday. And then on Saturday, we'll be at Kroger's Tractor Supply, Chick-fil-A, and MAPCO. Whether set up in a regular booth or in the cookie truck, we'll be set up at all those locations from 10 to 6 on Saturday. And then from 12 to 6 on Sunday at MAPCO, Kroger's, and Tractor Supply. So a lot of cookie booths still going on. We've got this weekend and next weekend of our official sale. And um, then we'll kind of be wrapping things up and 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 selling off what's left. So, okay. Well, what uh, it's so this van. This was like the girl local Girl Scouts troop van, and you modified it for this, or yes, this was our this was our local van for our Girl Scout troop, and um, uh, we we've had it for about five or six years, and then this year we just turned it into the cookie truck. Modified this window. A and R Glass did all of that work for us. A couple of bolts, and that window comes out, and the old window goes right back into place, and all the decals and stuff come right off, and we're ready for to do it next year. But until then, it'll just be our our Girl Scout van until until we turn it back into a cookie truck next year. Well, that's great. we've had lots. We've had lots of uh, communication with other councils and across the country. It's kind of um, it's kind of uh, hit a lot of, uh, of avenues and a lot of uh, marketing areas. And um, we've got our own council out of Nashville um, doing a piece on it, and several councils across the country that I'm interviewing with and, and doing some some work with them on the whole idea of the cookie truck. Okay. Well, what do the uh, what do the troops or Girl Scouts get to use the uh, the money that they raise uh, on money money for our troop that that we're doing this year. They've got a plan uh, to go to Savannah in um, late spring, early summer, if everything it permits. Uh, they want to make a trip to Savannah, Georgia, and then um, and then we also have several community service projects that we're working on. They've got a couple of cemetery projects that they're looking to do some restoration on some graves here um, in the Tullahoma area. And so that's going to be some of their community service projects that they're doing um, over the over the next several months and into the summer and the fall. So money goes to them, their trips, and to, and to their work that they're doing in the community. We have two girls right now uh, working on their Gold Award 
here in town, which is the highest honor um, that the girls can achieve. And um, two of our girls from our troop are working on that right now in the community. So. All right. Well, uh, so you say we've got this weekend and next weekend to get our Girl Scout cookies and we better hurry up and do it. Yes, you do. You got this weekend and next weekend. You can follow the cookie truck on Facebook at Girl Scout Cookie Truck. And that'll tell you all of our locations of where we're set up, whether it's the truck or whether it's just a traditional booth. And um, you can find us that way. And um, about everybody in town has my cell phone number so they can call me and we can make sure the girls can get cookies delivered to them that way as well. Or, um, but, and then cookie order 2163 at AOL.com. That's cookie order 2163 at AOL.com. They can email us and we'll arrange uh, to, for them to pick up cookies as well. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Greg. And I appreciate all the work you've gone over and above to, uh, to help make the, the cookie sale happen this year. Yeah, we're super excited about it. And appreciate you guys um, talking to us and helping us get the word out there. And stay with us. We'll have your weather forecast coming up after these messages. MacArthur Manor Assisted Living is passionate about creating better experiences for our Manchester seniors. Our residents describe us in a few words. Welcoming. When you walk through the doors at MacArthur Manor, we'll treat you like family. Caring. Through high standards of personalized care, we help residents live life to its fullest. Engaging. With a wide range of life-enriching activities, there is something for everyone at MacArthur Manor. With our residents and staff now vaccinated, call us today to schedule your safe and personalized tour. Everyone here at Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration would like to congratulate the 2021 Telahoma Wildcats, head coach John Olive, and staff on an outstanding undefeated season and first time state championship. Go Cats! Welcome back. We'll take a look at your weather forecast at this time, starting with your weather history on this date. And I hope you all have enjoyed our look back at the year that was 2021. Be sure to turn into News Leader each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evenings at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Stay safe and have a great evening.